Hello, good evening and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And you have myself, Stephen George. A very good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday the 27th of October 2013. Now, we've had a, a quick change around in the studio. We've moved, we've moved a few cables and we've taken a few bits out and then put them all back together again. So hopefully you'll be able to hear us and everything's going to be okay and hopefully the levels are okay as well. Fingers crossed, but I'm sure you'll let us know in the chat room if there's any uh, issues with the uh, sound levels or the audio there. But thanks a lot for coming in and uh, tuning in to OIM. We uh, have a guest on tonight. The chap's name is John Witherick, and he runs a website called getoutofdebtfree.org. And John is going to have some great information about what to do regarding credit cards and all that kind of stuff. But first, what we'll do is go over and find out what the weather is going to be like what the weather's going to be like, well, or what, what the weather is like. It's well, bucketing down rain <laughs> outside. The clocks went back, and uh, it's dreary, dismal, drab, dull, loads of the D words as well. And the UK is going to have a, a, a heavy tonight, isn't That's it? That's what we heard. We heard that the UK is, is going to have to batten down the hatches. It looks like, uh, from what we've seen yesterday, uh, the south of the UK is uh, in the red zone. That's the danger zone. Uh, I won't sing the song, but um, yeah, so anyone down the south end of the UK may need to batten down the hatches this evening because it's going to be a storm force, seemingly, uh, winds of 90 miles per hour. Okay, and it's actually raining outside here now, but there was a gust of wind earlier today, but that was it. Brilliant. Nothing else. Well, it's going to be pretty bad, but let's find out what the communication channels are, Steve, shall we? Okay, have you moved Mary around? Mary, are you still over there? She is. Okay, Mary, go ahead. Communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 927 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Okay, I don't know what happened to Mary there. Okay, we'll have to uh, sort out Mary. She didn't tell us the whole story there. But yeah, yeah. if you want to uh, contact us, um, um, Steve, you have the number there handy. Yes, it's programmed into the into the bath phone here. It's 0469271212. That's 0469271212. If you want to call in from the outside this uh, land of era, it's 00353 in front of that. And we also have, we're monitoring, monitoring like the NSA, we're monitoring the OAM chat room as well. That's oamradio.com. And on the left-hand side, you will see the live chat button. And there's several people already in there. So a big, a big hi to all of you. We will also be, thanks to uh, the NSA technology, monitoring the MSI. <laughs> the NSA, the MSI, the OAM. Uh, we're going to be monitoring uh, all sorts of chat rooms tonight. So uh, if you're, if you're e- even you sitting, you right there. Yes, you sitting in front of your computer. We're watching you as well. Alan. Fantastic. Now, as I said, it's a new setup, so um, we have done some testing. We have more testing to do, so fingers crossed everything's going to work perfectly. Um, but we have, our, we have our guest in. We'll be bringing uh, John in in a few minutes. But, you know, let's get down to what's been going on during the week. And I'm sure you all know what's been going on during the week. We had a TV program over here on the Irish television called RTE, and the TV program was called Prime Time. And basically, um, they were talking about, they had Ben Gilroy on, on the show, and Claire Cullinan. And it was really, um, I, I'm going to change it to crime time, rather than prime time. Because it was character assassination, it really was. So I'm going to call it crime time, not prime time. Because they did try and assassinate Ben and Claire. And unfortunately, uh, as I said to Finn uh, on one of the chat, uh, on one of the chat uh, streams on Facebook that uh, they did shoot themselves on the foot. It actually didn't work. Now, I seen it, the, I don't have RTE, so I seen it the next day on the website in the morning. And then when I went back to actually go and have another look at it, they had removed it. So I sent in a complaint to RTE, and I said to them, how dare they do that? They're supposed to be impartial, and we will make the choice as to what to do. But I don't know whether you're aware, but... Um, there was a message from RTE on the actual uh, that came up on Facebook, and it says here, RTE Complaints Department censorship of the Irish media by law since 1976, and it states, where the minister is of the opinion that the broadcasting of a particular matter or any matter of a particular class would be likely to promote or incite to crime or would tend to undermine the authority of the state, 
he may by order direct the authority or to ye to refrain from broadcasting the matter. So basically what's happening is the banks and the government are crapping themselves because the information that went out, as we said years ago in, av- in the advertising in, in, in the music business, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad advertising, it's advertising. And that's exactly what happened. And we will be sending the, the link to all our registered users on OIM, and that's going to be international. Now, as I say, when I went back to see it, it wasn't there. But a big thanks to, a uh, big shout out to Stephen at MSI, who actually was streaming the actual show, and he sent uh, a link over to us so we could actually see it. So thanks, Stephen, for doing that on MSI. Well done. And I believe now that that show is actually on YouTube. So you can probably um, search YouTube and find it there. But if you need so, the link... Sorry, does that mean now that RTE, or this, this uh, act that you spoke of earlier, they're going to be watching YouTube and chasing all these and removing off all the YouTube <laughs> channels? So what? So should everyone who can get a copy of that upload it to their own YouTube channel? Definitely. I think everybody, if you have a, a YouTube plug-in or download feature, while it's up there, download a copy if uh, the person doesn't mind uh, them doing that. And keep a copy on your hard disk and put it on Vimo, put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook, put it everywhere that you can and let everybody see it. We did send a copy over to Russia today and we sent a copy over to Bob Menard as well uh, for for, uh, Bob to see it. Um, So because I think it's uh, relevant information, I mean, talking about the the, the free man and everything else, I mean, it's funny how they take two words and put them together and then they try and make it like a real bad thing, you know. Um, now, we're not part of any free man society, but, I mean, are we free and are we men? Well, yeah, really. I think that's what it boils down to, Steve. Oh, no, I agree. I mean, we're, we're, again, I'm not going to jump. We're not going to obviously jump on, on the same thing we're saying, whereby we, we would be saying we're members of this, but then we're saying we're not members of that. We we, we like ideas and ideals, and the the whole free man idea, I, I think I, I am free, I was born free as far as I'm concerned, and I'd like, I'd like to keep it that way, although I know the government and people are trying to put chains around you and you know tie you down all the time, but um, we have seen some of the free man stuff, and some of it I like, some of it I, I, I don't like, but you know it's, it's kind of like religion, um, I don't subscribe to any religion, but then there's, there's certain things... Um, one religion may say that I would kind of go, you know what, I'll, kind of, I'll have that. that. That would work in my belief system, but it doesn't mean I belong to a religion. And you know, I might see something of a free man movement. There might be a piece of information there that would bode well with me. It doesn't mean I belong to anything. I don't, I don't belong, I belong to the earth, that's it. Steve likes the idea of turning the water into wine, don't you? Guinness. <laughs> into Guinness. Guinness. Turn the water into Guinness. Yeah, it's just funny that on the actual prime time show, as I say, crime time rather than prime time, um, that they all, they all they did was talk about the symptom, but they didn't co- talk about the cause of the problem. And yeah. the cause of the problem was the government and the banks, but they didn't talk about that. And that's just strange. And I had to laugh at the guy at the end who said, oh, well, if this stuff is really true, then you know, I might as well give up my job or whatever. And, and I thought, well, yeah, because obviously what you're doing is screwing people, which are large sisters' fees and barristers' fees and all that kind of stuff. When if you can, as a lay litigant, go in and represent yourself and learn a bit of the law, then why why do you need a sister? You know, so there you go. I don't know. Yeah, um, I just see on the chat there it says uh, that the podcast from RTE or whatever it's called, it's back on the on the RTE player. So obviously uh, they must have got a lot of complaints and realised that you know they kind of had to put it back on. Uh, that's kind of interesting. But just um, want to comment as well. I listened to. I didn't actually see the, the, the crime time or prime time program the other night. I didn't see it live. I did see snippets of it the following day, and I, I was very, very interested in, in what I heard because it, it did look like it was portrayed as if they were going after some seedy characters somewhere, you know, prime time investigates. And um, I have to say, and I, there's a link up the very top of the chat. I put it up there earlier. I did listen to two hours of Vin from MSI. He he done a, a kind of a dissect on the program, line by line, piece by piece, and it was an eye opener. It definitely was an eye opener because Vin spoke about all the little snippets where they they introduced NLP and exactly what they were doing, and he done a fantastic job. So kudos to to Vin and uh, Ben actually joined them and say so the link is up top and it's it's two hours. It's absolutely fantastic, and anyone who who maybe didn't see the RTE piece should uh, at least 
uh, click on the link and watch or listen to Vin and Ben dissect it anyway because it, it makes very interesting listening. Yeah, um, and the other thing is, I went over to the RT website, and I don't know whether you've, if anybody's not gone over there, I recommend going over and have a look. And, and talk about, they must be desperate for getting funds or something, because it's just littered with adverts. It looks like somebody, you know, badly designed the website, and it's just, it's so busy, you can't find what you want, and it's just full of adverts. So I don't know, I don't know what they're doing. I know probably RT is struggling at the moment and they're going to be struggling even more now because you know what a waste of time but i think rte have to be careful as well because you know you know they always say people in in, gra- in glass houses shouldn't throw stones and uh if rte are squeaky clean themselves then fair enough but if they're not squeaky clean and there's one or two people in rte who are disgruntled and are whistleblowers well then you know at the end of the day that's what happens really so um, we never know. You might get one or two whistleblowers contacting you in the alternative media and telling us things that are going on on RTE that you know we should know about or the general public should know about. Maybe you never know. No, sounds like you're casting aspersions on on on, on the state broadcast. Today. Never, never. Are you saying that they have all these ads on the on the thing because they're losing revenue because people are starting to wake up and realise that uh, you know the whole thing is just as. Um uh, I can't think of his name, but as he said, it's just it's just a game, it's just a ride, and you can get off at any time. People Bill are starting. Hicks. Bill Hicks, beautiful Bill Hicks. Maybe people are starting to wake up and realise that it is a game, and you can get it. You can just get off at any time, and you know maybe paying license fee to to a greedy corporation like RTE is just well, obviously by not paying a license fee will starve them, and then maybe when they start hoarding, maybe the, when they when they realise that they're not putting out what the people want or what the people need, maybe they might change their attitude. I suppose they, they have to kind of pander to our needs as well. And if, you know, if we're not watching their programs and we're not paying their TV license fee, well, then they'll just cease to exist. Exactly. Well, we, look, we all know that the RTE is a propaganda uh, station for the government. I mean, you can't really think people are that stupid. People are beginning to wake up en masse now and ask questions. And they, they can't be that naive to think that we're going to think like that. So, um, but we'll see what happens anyway. I mean... We'll just, we'll just have to see what happens. But we'll crack on, Steve, and you're going to tell us about Ashling. Um, Yeah, I suppose I may as well. Uh, yes, Ashling Fitzgibbon, the girl against fluoride, anyone who doesn't know her. Well, I'm sorry, we can't help you there. Just Google her. Uh, Ashling, she's uh, an open invitation. She's inviting you to celebrate the launch of the 2014 Naked Calendar. Yes, you heard the word right. The Naked Calendar at the film-based Temple Bar in Dublin too. That's on Thursday... The 7th of November, doors open at 6.30pm. I'm not sure what time the clothes are coming off at, but the doors open at 6.30. So uh, make sure you're there. And again, that's uh, Ashley Fitzgibbon, the girl against fluoride. She's doing Trojan work as well. She also has a video, a new video up on her website. And it's definitely worth taking a look at. Alan. Well, or is it me? Is it yeah, me again? You, it? Yeah, you again. Oh, I'll, I'll keep on going. Yeah, we, Alan mentioned there last week about a missing person, uh, Vicky Barker. Uh, she's, seen me, she's a regular on United We Strike and she runs the UnitedWeLight.com website. She had been missing and we did put a call out as well as other internet radio stations as well just to see if anyone knew anything of her whereabouts and if she was safe and sound. And it seems we have got some feedback to say she is okay and she is fine. So that's good. Excellent stuff. Okay, um, so well done, Vicky. I mean, obviously there was issues there, but we sorted them out, and that's fine. Now, one of the things that myself and Steve uh, have sat around and talked about with the old cup of tea and that, and something that we kind of were thrown around is a decentralised internet. Now, kind of myself and Steve have an interest in communications, as some of you know, and we were talking about maybe having a go at, well, we at least we were talking about it anyway, we have to weigh up and find out what the equipment is and what cost it is. But setting up a decentralized uh, network system, and it would start off with, um, well, Steve uh, lives about 10 kilometers away from me. So we'd need to have antennas that are, you know, quite strong to pick up each other's antennas. Um, but you, they're, they're called uh, point-to-multipoint antennas. And basically, uh, you offer internet to people in the village. Uh, and people connect to this antenna, and then that antenna connects to Steve's antenna, which then connects to the people in his village. So this is a kind of general idea. So we're just trying around with the idea because there's because of the NSA thing and everything else, and there's a few countries. I think Greece were doing it, Steve. I think that's the one you told me. That's about, right. Yeah, Greece have already done this, and 
sorry. Uh, yeah, Greece have already done this, and they haven't done it on a small scale. They've done it on a large scale, whereby they have set up kind of these little webs um, among villages, yeah, if, if you like. And I think one of them that I read about there, it must be about three, four weeks ago, and I mentioned to Alan, and that's kind of what lit the lit the fuse, if you like, and we start looking into this, because one of the villages had done it, and they had 20,000 people on their network, so it's 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 not a small operation. This is fairly big, and it's just like everyone communi- uh, co- uh, connecting, sorry, yeah, can everybody connects w- with everyone else, so it's, it's, it's like a little mesh network of you and all your neighbours, and it's... It's, it looks good to say we're still looking into it because we, there's, there's a few little things that we, we haven't figured out, we haven't ironed out. Now, I know Alan has done some good work. He's been, he's been uh, communicating with the people who sell the equipment and he's, he's going to do some, uh, doing some stuff in the background there with them to obviously get, get some more information. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if we get any more news or when, when we have any more news, it'll definitely it'll go out anyway. It'll be up on the site so uh, people will know. But little, little networks of people. Say, kind of staying off the grid if you like but still being having you know having access to to your internet it's um, well let's wait and see even even with a power down situation or a grid down situation once you have car batteries inverters and stuff like that solar panels then you could still actually run some kind of network so that's kind of the thinking behind it anyway but you know it's on the uh, it's on the list to have a look at. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that's been donating. Um, every little bit, it, it, it doesn't matter whether it's one, two, three euros. Everything helps. And if you can't, if you don't have any money, clicking on the ad that there's an ad that you fancy is fantastic. It's really, really helping us and keeping us going. We did buy um, a little bit of equipment this week. Hence all the change around in the studio. And a big thank you to everyone that donated. That really, you know, it makes a difference from our end and we can get the few bits and pieces that we want to get to improve things and, and make things uh, work better um, so that's really what's happening at the moment but how's your week Steve? Uh, yeah my week's been fine I, I've, I've been kind of just over the past couple of days watching some information on YouTube uh, again it's information that you've been kind of sending over to me there was the one about the, the chap whose name escapes me at the moment but he he done a, a talk on a I think it was an, I can't even remember the name of the station. It was another another internet radio station, and he spoke about that he was he was actually worked for NASA, and he's not working there anymore. But he does have a friend who still works there, and he still talks to this friend. But when he was working there, he said they were tracking some uh, an L shaped thing up in the skies, and it kind of went off the radar in 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 and around Mars a couple of months ago. So. He was talking to his friend, and see me, it's back on the radar, and it's at the back of the moon. If you want to believe it, great. If you don't want to believe it, don't. I, they, it's, we're, we're, I'm, I'm on the fence anyway. I don't know what to believe. Uh, you know, there, maybe there is something, maybe there's not. We'll probably find out in due course. But that was kind of interesting. Uh, no, I won't be selling my body for a few washers. Can I just touch base on that? The guy who was involved in this, he was actually picked up by the Secret Service and, and brought to the this... Um, observatory to have a look at this and the technology they had was you know way beyond what we have but he he booked into a hotel on a pseudonym and then rang the radio station using a different name and within about i don't know an hour um room service were ringing him saying do you have a dr norton in the room and he had to just get out of the room because they tracked him down and we were in an hour they were asking questions jesus so that was uh, now I don't know how true this is I really don't but you know I just think with everything going on at the moment Fukushima God I mean Ray talking about radiation things are pretty bad there uh, but everything else going on as well something has to give so we're just kind of keeping an eye on things um, I I'm not going to say much for my week because um, basically I'm just you know looking at the prime time stuff we do want to get John in and talk to John about uh, credit cards and everything else because. He's got a mindful of information and a great website as well. So without further ado, we're going to bring John in and um, have a chat with John. Good evening, John. How are you? Good evening. How are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. John, uh, thanks for coming on to the show. I think we've, we've had a look at your website, getoutofdebtfree.org, and you've got fantastic information there. And I'm sure, I know you've been going around the UK and doing talks, but... Before we get into you know the nitty gritty, do you want to tell us a bit about who you are and about the website setting that up and what made you set it up? Oh my goodness! Yeah, well, it was a few years now actually because uh, uh, you know, like so many people, I ended up in debt. You know, I, I had a nice little business for a while, and uh, I suddenly uh, 
sold it and uh, didn't have a very good contract uh, and ended up uh, not getting paid and uh, ended up in a lot of debt uh, after having quite a successful business. Uh, so it wasn't that you know the business didn't work. Uh, but I was also going through a big change because uh, I suddenly realised that the uh, you know the banks weren't being completely honest with us as far you know I, I'd started reading uh, you know this was before everything on YouTube and the, there wasn't much on the internet at the time and uh, got most of my information from Nexus magazine. Do you remember that? I do indeed, yeah. Well, it's still going. It's still very successful. But, you know, instead of a little bite-sized piece of information, you you had like like six-page, uh, you know, a really heavy-duty uh, uh, information there. And I can remember reading something about the uh, Federal Reserve not being federal and not having any reserves. And so I knew, you know, started finding out a little bit about how the whole financial system is a scam uh, but yeah that didn't actually save me from the uh, you know the debt collectors because of course what they were doing they were phoning up every uh, you know literally every day well yeah it was literally every day because I had so many debts in the end that uh, you know I got really hammered by the debt collectors and they made me quite nervous uh, because I didn't know how to deal with them yeah, and uh, but I knew the whole. You know, it's almost like when you know it's a scam, and but you can't quite work out how to deal with it. And I knew there had to be something, uh, you know, some way of sorting it out. And then it's almost like I was looking for it. Uh, I knew it was out there somewhere, but I couldn't find it. And that's when I came across Mary Elizabeth Croft and her ebook on uh, how I. Oh, what was her? Uh, uh, I've got it written down somewhere, uh, uh, but it, her ebook, which was... Uh, it, it's something like how, how I confiscated every... How I clobbered every yeah. bureaucratic cash confiscatory agency known to man. That's it. That's some... In brackets, a spiritual economics book. That's right. That's some title, all right. That is, yeah. It's going to be, it's going to, uh, yeah, it's going to win something for the longest title. But uh, what an amazing book. Uh, and if anyone hasn't read it, uh, there's a link to it on the front of the Get Out of Debt Free website because uh, we say, you know, and it always said on the front of the site, you know, I don't take any, uh, you know, responsibility for the site as far as uh, the ideas. It said this site would not be possible without the dedicated work of Mary Elizabeth Croft, who is an inspiration to us all. And it was her that really started off and got on the, you know, started waking people up, not only to the banking scam but what we could do about it because of course you know she started saying things like the banks were creating money out, out of thin air and she was also talking about uh, something that uh, you know that you, you have a, a sort of legal personality uh, and, and things like this and she was talking about the birth certificate so she was talking about some quite revolution uh, you know you've got to remember this was about seven years ago yeah yeah so it was you know Nowadays, those of us sort of involved with searching for the truth, sort of, oh, yeah, you know, we get a bit blasé about it. But in those days, very few people were even aware of it. And of course, I'd go and try, you know, I'd go and do talks about stuff. And because uh, I'd started going to do talks about various things down the local pub, and everyone just took the piss out of me. Yeah, you know, they still do occasionally, but uh, you know, there was nobody actually that was particularly interested in hearing what I had to say. And that has changed in the last few years. That has changed hugely. Yeah, big time. And you do a lot of talks as well, don't you, around the UK? I do. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I haven't had the chance to come to uh, Ireland yet, but I would love to. So uh, if there's anyone out there that can, uh, you know, uh, I I'd certainly love to come over to your good country. Definitely. I think it would be great for you to come over. I mean... Um, that's something that you know maybe somebody out there might have an idea what what the best way is to organise it and maybe have a joint um, discussion. I know uh, on the MSI before um, they have they had have, have done uh, seminars and we have been involved in one of them where you have a number of guests um, and they come over and do a talk and it's it's great for people from a, from a learning process. But let's uh, let's go into what you really cover. Uh, one of the big things that you cover is obviously credit cards, which is the bane of most people. Um, yeah. They're a necessary well, evil. Can I, just go back, can I just go back a little bit just to fill in one of the links? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you know, basically she actually came up with a way of dealing with the banks. And I thought, this is brilliant. You know, because she said, oh, 
ask them for this and ask them for that. So I thought, brilliant. You know, it's all sort of, you know, <laughs> I, I thought, fantastic. So what I did, I got onto the internet thinking, well, so, you know, her letters are going to be on the internet. So I got onto Google, and you know, normally when you Google something, you find hundreds of thousands, if not millions of results. So I looked at Mary Elizabeth Croft template letters, and there was nothing on the internet. And I'm thinking, I can't believe it. Uh, because, you know, a few people were reading her book by that time. Uh, but what I had to do is actually reread her book a couple of times and actually go through and, you know, basically create the letters pretty well, you know, just from her, uh, her ideas. So I, I created the letters. Uh, so, you know, they were based on her teachings, if you like, uh, and what was in her book. But there wasn't, you know, I had to basically put them together, which was good because it made me think a little bit. And uh, so I put the letters together and used them. And uh, I couldn't believe how quickly the debt collectors and the banks actually gave up. So uh, they worked for me. And then I thought, you know, when you get a little voice in your head and you think, oh, I've really got to do something, uh, you know, I've got to get these out and share them. And you think, oh, well, I can, you know, I'll put it off. But this little voice kept coming back. And uh, so in the end, I actually just put up a really basic website called Get Out of Debt Free, which was, you know, based on Get Out of Jail Free, because I thought the whole thing, she would talk about the whole thing being a game of monopoly. So I thought, oh, let's see, Get Out of Jail Free card. And so I put the, uh, I put the letters up, and, uh, and then we added a few different countries, and then we added a forum, and then it started growing from there. And now we're getting about 5,000 people a day actually hitting the site. So there's some quite serious traffic going to it. That's, a lot of people signing up. That's, that's brilliant. John, I was just wondering, we're getting a bit of a hissy sound coming in. Do you, right. ha- do you have a headset microphone or a separate microphone? I've got, I've got a microphone I can plug in, but I, I get a really bad echo with it. It's a USB microphone. Right. Do you want to just try that for us? I'll give it a minute. go. Okay. Cheers. I'll give it a go. Yeah, there is a bit of a hiss going on. I've just put in the chat box there. We apologise to the listeners. We're getting it as well this end, and okay. it's, it's outside of our control. I know Alan has been doing his best twiddling some knobs there to try and filter it out to no avail. Yeah, and we just want to, obviously, the information that John has is going to be important, so if we can get it like as clear as we can, then it'll be really good. Okay, give me two minutes. Two minutes. Two uh, minutes. <laughs> okay. Well, you just have to change over your mic and Skype. Yeah, and take your time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as if yeah. we're live or anything. So, you know, <laughs> take your time. <laughs> take your time. Yeah. Well, we we can actually we can actually t- have a quick talk while John's doing that, talking about the credit cards. Um, the Mary B. The Mary Croft book. Um, I have the book and I have read some of it. I haven't read all of it. And but somebody did say to me that part of the book. Um, there's a lot on the book now that's defunct that doesn't apply and I don't know why they said that and why that is I don't know because I haven't read all of it but um, you'll just have to uh, just have to read the rest of the book and find out really but I know there's a few people on a couple of people on the chat facility said they've read the book and it's very good well, you see Mick said there that he tried uh, Mary's concept in his local shop for ju- just, just for the hell of it after reading her book and he was told to <laughs> Told to uh, get lost, and that's been um, just being polite there. Right, okay. How are you doing, John? Yeah, well, uh, I, I'm still on the. Uh, I don't think I've got the microphone going yet, but just get. It's installing itself at the moment, so. Uh, oh, that's oh, that's beautiful. Oh. That's better. That's much better. Okay, how's that? That's much better. That's a uh, hundred percent better. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, keep it like that. That's fantastic. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, that's sounding good, because I'm not getting an echo, and I can hear you, and uh, so, yeah, no, that's good. No, that sounds much better, John, much better. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a good quality microphone, that is. Sorry, but I've had problems with setting it up in the past, that's all. So, uh, yeah, we're up and running with you now. Yeah, no, that's great. No, once you have your headphones on, then the chances, the chances are you won't get the echo, because normally the echo is caused by the mic on the laptop picking up the speakers and running it through the system again. 
But yeah. that, that's fine. You've got headphones on with the, that USB mic. That's fine. Okay, let's crack on. Now we have good quality. That's brilliant. Okay, so so carry on, John. You were saying that you were pestered by the deaders, and you read Mary B. Crofts. You did. You you followed her instructions. You did the letters, and you were amazed at the fact that the banks went away. So take it up from there. Yeah. Well, something else I wanted to uh, talk about was that something was actually going on within me as well, because up until that point, when the debt collectors used to phone. You know, suddenly my voice would go all sort of squeaky and uh, I'd get really nervous and, and my heart would start going. I'd start sweating because I was actually getting really intimidated. It's, it's almost like if somebody comes up to you and starts like, you know, squaring up and intimidating you generally. Uh, I was getting intimidated by the debt collectors until I found out all this information and then sent these letters off. And then something happened because then they would phone up and I knew that it was a big scam. And so initially what I used to do was just do simple little things like uh, when they phone up, I'd put them on hold and play music to them and say, oh, just one moment. And, <laughs> and then, you know, give them two or three minutes and see if they're still there. And I had a, I started having a really good laugh with them. And I realized that my whole attitude from one moment being in fear to the next moment actually being uh, empowered, if you like, by the information. And I think it's really important that when you start finding out the truth about how the banks create money out of thin air, and there's lots of quotes from actual bankers who actually say that they create money, out, you know, they create new credit. And so when we realise the whole thing is a complete scam, and especially now that uh, I don't know what, what it's happening in, in Ireland as far as benefits and things like that. But I know, you know, you must be aware that in this country they are targeting the poorest, the, you know, disabled people, hitting their benefits. Anyone on benefits at the moment uh, who, you know, and, and, you know, so few jobs going for so many people uh, that people are really getting hammered at the moment. Yeah. And, and, and this is it's almost like. They're planning to do everything they can to disempower us. Uh, so if you've got a job, they make you work really hard. And uh, and if you haven't got a job, they'll just hit you financially. So it, it's uh, it's almost like they're doing everything they can uh, to keep keep us under control. That's how I feel. Yeah, it's it's it, 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 yeah, it's, cynical. Yeah, no, it's it's happening over here, John. It's the same yeah, thing. I'm we sure have um. Uh, Enda Kenny, he was there, Taoiseach, like the Prime Minister, and he's on 200,000 a year, and he's telling us that um, he's going to be cutting salaries and wages and, and benefit and everything else, and he's on a 200,000 salary. Yeah, I mean, I know. you know, yeah. see, I mean, that in itself, yes. it's just, you know, do as I say, not as I do attitude, you know, and... <clears throat> Excuse me, the old, this is why the primetime TV program, now I know you uh, had a look at that as well, and we, yes. we, were, we were kind of um, chatting on Skype today, and I mean, they have really shot themselves in the foot, more and more people are beginning to wake up, and like in the UK, there's people saying, look, sod the TV licence, and sod this, and we're not going to pay this, and not going to do this. And I, it's, it's, it's very empowering to see that, and this is the one thing I will say to people, when I kind of start looking into this, like you did, John, and you get worried about debts and bills and stuff like that and people chasing you, and even that little bit of knowledge, knowing that it's a scam, just yeah. gives you that kind of feeling of empowerment and okay. just relaxed. Because obviously with the two people a day on average committing suicide over here, you know, you can understand why people can get, they get the end of the rope and they're just like, you know, do you want to do something? And a little bit of knowledge makes you that little bit more relaxed and self-empowered. And by getting together with people and who, who share the same knowledge and you can help each other, then that's the way you should be. Totally. Uh, and we've actually had people uh, who have uh, put in success stories. And uh, I think we've got over 500 success stories on the forum now. Uh, and some of those aren't just for one credit card. Those might be for like eight or nine credit cards. So uh, we're getting, getting a, lot of, uh, a lot of wins at the moment. Uh, but we've actually had people that have said that they were at the point of, you know, thinking, you know, quite dark thoughts uh, before they actually found the site. So uh, 
it's it's I, I'm just very fortunate I found the information to begin with and that I was able to share it because uh, I, I feel that uh, it's almost like a uh, sort of national service that the uh, the website offers now uh, and can I also say it, it's although I tend to be myself and Salon uh, tend to be the spokespeople for the uh, website uh, but it really is an online community now so uh, I really don't take any sort of credit for either starting the site or it just happens that I did start it but it was Mary Elizabeth Croft's idea in the first place and now it's very much a community thing so uh, I just happen to be the one that uh, gets on the radio or go around festivals and talks to uh, talking about it along with Salon uh, so yeah. Well, I think you have to have some credit, John. I know you got the idea from Mary, but then you took the idea and ran with it, and you've put your energy into it as well. So I think you have to have some of the credit as well. Well, yeah, yeah, well, that's very kind of you. Funnily enough, uh, I got an email uh, about three or four weeks ago uh, from uh, from Mary Elizabeth Croft, and uh, she was saying thank you because so many people had found her ebook through the website. <laughs> and I feel... I feel really guilty that when people put in Mary Elizabeth Croft, we actually beat her website. So uh, it, it's funny that she uh, she never actually put the letters out there. And she was never that confident because she felt that you'd have to keep changing the letters. Yeah. But that's what we do. We do change the letters quite regularly. And we're making, you know, we're actually rebuilding the site completely at the moment. And we reckon within... You know, two or three weeks, we're going to have a completely updated site. Uh, so, you know, we're not hanging about at all. We're not sort of like sitting back and, and patting ourselves on the back saying uh, how successful the site is, and how many people it's waking up. If we can do better, we always will. And it really is, you know, it's nothing to do with ego or anything else. It's just that we realize that the system is very, very corrupt. And the more that we can do to highlight that, uh, and, and save people who are being hit really hard by the corrupt system. And, and it's, it's, we know that it's not just the banks. We know they work with the broadcast. We know they work with the radio. They work with the TV stations. They work with the newspapers. They work with the courts. And, you know, and, and obviously, uh, I, I guess, a few sort of secret societies in there. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of Masonic connections without sounding like a conspiracy theorist. Uh, we know that they're all in it together because they work together. Uh, and it, it's quite obvious when you see what RTE had just done last week. Definitely. Well, Crown Copyright on our chat facility actually mentioned that something. He says here, um, does Get Out of Debt Free have an MSI OAM banner? Banner, you boys uh, could do with the traffic. Well, we get a lot of traffic to OAM, I have to say. But, yeah, we must get a banner off you, um, John, and we'll stick it on OAM. That would be and, lovely, uh, and uh, I will do likewise. I've got an MSI uh, banner on the on the new website. I, I've been redoing all our links for the new website, but uh, I've got an MSI one. So if you can send us over something, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get you up there definitely. Yeah, yeah likewise, we'll sort it out um, um, off air. But okay, so John, let's get into it. Let's get into the crux of the information that people want to know. Let's take credit cards. Um, and let's start there because that seems to be your bread and butter for, by the sound of yes. things. Right, okay. I come to you and I go, John, I have a credit card. No, John, I do have credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be Joe Bloggs and I go, John, I'm really you know, in debt with this credit card. What do I do? What okay. do you say to them? Okay, well, the first thing to do is I say just get onto the website. Uh, it's all there. Uh, there's a bit called Getting Started. And what I would suggest, read the getting started. I know you're going to want to, you know, rush off and, uh, you know, get going with the letters, sending the letters off. Uh, but what we say to begin with is you've got to look out for the uh, the setting off rules, as they call it. Uh, if you've got two, uh, two accounts, uh, uh, say if you've got a savings account and a current account, or you've got a credit card with the same bank that you have a current account you've got to be careful that the bank doesn't steal your wages to pay either the mortgage or the credit card so if, say if you've got a current account with Barclays and you've got a Barclay card 
they have been known under what's called the setting off rules mm. uh actually stealing money stealing your wages uh, and remember of course that they're creating this money out of thin air which you know if anyone sort of questions that uh there's a very good website that highlights the problem I, i'm not quite confident about their solutions but positive money is very good at highlighting what the problems are and there's loads of quotes on that website of bankers and financiers actually saying that they create it's the bankers themselves say they create money out of thin air so it's not a load of conspiracy theorists saying this so uh, you've got to realize that they create money out of nothing and in fact what's going on just to, you know going one level more and there's lots of levels to this but what happens is when you get a, uh, a credit card application form, they're using that. They convert that into a promissory note, either you know a loan or credit card agreement. And so you're creating the money with your signature. And so and then all they're doing is swapping their money, their bits of paper. So you're swapping your bit of paper for their bit of paper. But the difference is we actually have to go to work. <laughs> and actually, it's, it's like our sweat equity. So, you know, th th there's anyone that says, well, well, hang on, you got the money. Well, no, you didn't. But you still have to work to pay it off. And not only that, you have to do it with interest. And, of course, that's the other thing, of course, because, of course, that interest doesn't exist. Exactly. And this is the, pro this is the problem. This is why the current financial system has to fail at some point. It's going to crash. It's a big Ponzi scheme. Totally, absolutely, totally. Uh, and what I do to explain this, I keep things really simple because uh, I haven't got, you know, I'm not one of these people that goes into a lot of detail. People say, have I got a degree in economics? Not a chance, not a chance. People I speak to with a degree in economics find it very, very difficult to understand what the problem is because their heads are so full of various different things they've been taught that they can't actually see what's going on. And so what I say to people is, you know, when I'm getting up and doing talks, I actually have little 10 marbles in a little bag. I say, right, I've got 10 marbles here, OK? Count them out, put them back in the bag and say, right, can anyone get 11 marbles out of this bag? You know, have we got any magicians or conjurers or anything like that? And so everyone shakes their head. And I say, well, that is exactly what banks do. They'll give you a certain amount of money, but they want more back. And the trouble is that extra bit of interest, which is compound interest, that doesn't exist and it never will exist. Mm. And this is why we're in the situation where we've got debt which outstrips the money supply. So every single politician that gets up there and says, oh, we need austerity measures, we need cutbacks, that is rubbish. We need to get rid of the debt because it can never be paid back. And I've got graphs that I show in the talks that actually show the debt is way above the money supply. So if we tried, if everyone tried to pay off all their debts, including the, the government, we would run out of money before we paid the debt off. Yeah. yeah. So we know the politicians are lying to us. And this is why they do hatchet jobs on us, because they know that we are correct and they are wrong. Yeah, and of course, what we said before we went live, John, is that, you know, you, like you, I've been looking into the law, and when people turn around, like the primetime TV program, and they say about, you know, old people can't do this, that, and the other, you think, well, hang on a minute, I'm just quoting from your legal books. Totally. You know, totally. so it's, you know, I, like, I'm not making the law, up, the law up myself. I'm going and getting the legal dictionary and looking at the definition of what you're saying. And you're totally. disagreeing uh, with it, you know? Totally. Uh, and uh, RTE were saying, oh, and these people believe that the law doesn't apply to them. It, 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 and almost in a condescending way, they talk to the, they talk to the audience like, you know, a teacher would, you know, to, uh, well, a condescending teacher would do to young children. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they say, well, oh, these people believe. But the thing is, if you look in Black's Law Dictionary, the only one I, you know, the only quote I, I do that I can remember, it actually says that a statute law is a legislative rule of society given the force of law by those who consent. And, so, and, there's, <laughs> a, and there's a maximum in, in, maxim in law that says consent creates the law. Totally, totally. And the police, police by consent. 
Yeah. Well, we are governed. By yeah. Force. yeah, we are. We are. Well, here's the thing. We will talk credit cards, but I ha- well, on this <laughs> yes, subject, I'm, yeah. well, I'm, I have to say this, right? Yeah. And this is just my logic, right? We are in, at the moment, we're in the Republic of Ireland. And if you look up the Oxford English Dictionary and look up the Republic, what Republic is, it's obviously uh, 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 the people tell the government what to do. And basically, a dictatorship is the opposite, right? So... If we're in a republic, so what happens is the government creates a bill, the bill gets passed, the legislator puts that into law, and we're supposed to um, uh, agree to that law. We're, well, not agree to it, we're supposed to do what we're told. But how is that a republic? That's a dictatorship. Surely we should, if we consent to it, which is the maxim, if we consent to it, then it's law. But if we go, sorry, I'm not consenting today, then that's the way it should be. And right. that's, that's them telling us that's the way the system is. Well, I'm not making this up. That's what their system, that's what their legal system says. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it is so crazy uh, that it's almost like the emperor's new clothes, isn't it? Where, you know, there's us going, look, look, <laughs> you know, the emperor is naked or the king is naked. Uh, and, and everyone else is so sort of, Believing everything because they've been told, you know, oh no, no, he's got the finest clothes, and you know, you can't see them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and we realise, and we're going, no, 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 he's naked. Look. Yeah. Uh, and people are waking up. And, uh, and, and, and this is why they, they're now getting very, very scared because they're terrified of the truth. Well, what we we are learning the law, and we are using their system against them, and they don't okay. like it. Totally. They're saying, totally. oh, hang on a minute, no, 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 we, we're the educated people, we'll use this because you're the peasant and you should know about this because we are highly educated and we know this stuff and you're yeah. the peasant, you shouldn't be able to do that. And we're That's going, well, hang on a minute, we're reading your books and we're going to apply the same rules that you play by and they're going, oh, hang on a minute, I'm taking my marbles and going home. That's not <laughs> fair. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very okay, true. let's talk about um, the credit cards. Right, so I come to you, John, and go, right, I've, 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 I've got the idea in my head. I understand the banks are corrupt. There's no money. Fractional reserve banking. Blah, 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 blah. What do I do? Okay. So once you've read the sort of getting started and, you, you know, you've sort of like, you've checked out that you're, uh, you're not, you know, by uh, having a go at one credit card, they're not going to steal money from another account. Then what you do, you send, we've got three letters. And what we do, we ask them very simple questions. Uh, we ask them for validation of the debt. We sort of say, well, where did you get the money from? Just show us the accounting. Show us where you got the money from. Uh, either with a, uh, you know, they can verify their claim either with a sworn affidavit or a hand-signed invoice, you know, in accordance with the uh, Bills of Exchange Act. Uh, we also ask them for a, a, a copy of the contract signed by both parties because uh, we actually got a, uh, a, a banking uh, a bank manager on side, and this guy was actually quite remarkable because he he had seen a lot of and understood a lot of the stuff that we were talking about, and, and this is stuff that's on the uh, website uh, on, on a video called the Banking Insider, and this is a guy who we had to keep keep his name and which bank he worked for quite well. In fact, we had to actually disguise his uh, voice. But he agreed with us on a lot of these main things. And he actually said that when you sign your credit card agreement, there is no one in the bank that signs it. What they do, they just put computer signatures on them. Because if somebody actually signed them, then they would actually be taking liability. Of course, we're talking about the blue ink signature. Of and, course. and they know that they're committing fraud, so they don't sign okay. it. Totally. So you just get... Uh, these computer signatures in black, you know, so yeah. w- which is the uh, you know part of the uh, you know the uh, you know the dead the, the dead person effectively the uh, you know the corporation. So now there's something that you just said there, which I just want to jump in. You said agreement. Now, yes. if you look up in the legal dictionary, the difference between an agreement and a contract, which I did. Now, uh, this is just my understanding from reading my legal dictionary, which is Gartner's legal dictionary. Yeah. An agreement, like if you and me, if I said to you, right, we, we have an agreement that we'll, we'll meet each other at 7 o'clock tonight, right? If you don't turn up at 7 o'clock, then there's nothing I can do about that. But if we had a contract where you had to turn up at 7 and you didn't, then I could sue you. Yeah. So a, an agreement is an arrangement. It's not necessarily a contract. 
totally. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, but uh, uh, some agreements can be lawfully binding uh, if you, uh, you know, if, they, if you agree to it. But uh, because we get them into a, a tacit agreement, uh, which means that if we don't hear from them, they will agree to the following. Uh, uh, you, you know, we, we basically say, well, we ask them for all these things, validation of the debt. We ask them for the contract. And we're also asking the banks for the uh, credit agreement, the original, uh, the original note. Uh, and not a photocopy. Uh, what we actually want is a, uh, a certified copy, uh, a true and certified copy, which means it's got to be signed. And uh, but the trouble is, of course, what they do, they will, they basically sell it because it's worth something. So this is where they get all these uh, loan agreements and flog them on. And uh, they securitize it. They, they, they turn it into a, 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 stat a statutory instrument. And okay. they, it's okay. a financial document. But what about people who sign up for credit cards online? Uh, well, you know, they, they, they actually, what you're going to realise is they create the statute law as they go along. But we realise that, you know, there's a far older laws. So the law of contract comes first between two people having an agreement. And uh, they can make as many, you know, you, you've got the, uh, uh, the uh, Consumer Credit Act. And... Uh, Basically, they put in everything, so they, they've got it all covered. Uh, and what they don't cover there, they put in the terms and conditions. And there are now, uh, you've, you've actually got experts on contract law who struggle to understand the terms and conditions on credit cards. So, <laughs> can you see, they're actually making their terms and conditions so complex that even, uh, you, you know, you get the brightest person in the land on law still can't really understand what, what's in the terms of contracts on, on a standard credit card okay. agreement. Because so, what they're doing, they're putting in so many levels of complexity within the law and their terms and conditions that uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's making a mockery of, of standard... Uh, yeah, it, well, it's making a mockery of the law, to be honest. Well, does that mean that technically then the agreements are going to be uh, null and void? Because if they're not fully transparent... I mean, you're, if you're not a solicitor and you're not a contract solicitor, how are you uh, expected to understand the terms and conditions of well, it before you sign up to a credit card? Well, the thing is, you see, if, you, if they haven't signed the, the, you know, the so-called contract or the agreement, how can it be binding? Uh, and yeah. what we do, we ask them uh, for you know, a, a number of things uh, in, in the letters, and if they don't supply that, we give them 10 days or so, and uh, and then we remind them after 10 days. And then after that 10 days, we say, look, unless you, uh, you know, uh, unless you agree to the following terms, uh, you know, we, we'll actually say that, you, you know, either prove this or we are agreed to the following terms, which is that the debt doesn't exist in the first place, either that or it's already been paid and that any damages I suffer, you will be responsible for and that any negative remarks to a a credit reference agency will be removed and you will no longer pursue the matter and we also get them to agree to pay all fee schedules uh, now obviously you know trying to get the last couple of them uh, can be a bit of a struggle sometimes but we're having people getting their credit reference uh, with well, credit history actually repaired by challenging it so you yeah, know there's some very clever people on the forum now and uh, I'm not as up to date as a lot of the people in the forum. So uh, what I'd suggest, if anyone's got any questions, uh, <laughs> some of the guys that we've got on the forum are, are streaks ahead of me now. Fantastic. I've got the ball rolling, but uh, it, it's, it's, ca it's, it's picking up a lot of moss now. That's brilliant. And what about, uh, um, we will get into the, a bit more on the leathers, but I was speaking to Yoda, who's on uh, MSI, and oh, yes. Yoda told me about the, the choice rule in law. And the choice rule is basically, you ask them three times by letter yes. to give me the information I require. And if they yes. don't give it to you, then in law, it's obviously they don't have it. That means it doesn't exist. Totally, totally. And so that's what we're doing. So we're you, using so, old legal maxims here. Yeah. So, so that's your, you know, I, I did uh, speak to Vin during the week regarding map, maxims because I found a few that are very, uh, very poignant. But obviously, um, Vin was saying it's obviously best not to use a maxim in court itself 
because um, they frown, the judges would frown on that. But, yeah. however, the maxims are there for a reason. And basically, yes. you know, um, if, the, if, if in the law it says that, you know, if you ask them three times and they don't produce the, the documentation that you want, then fair enough. Now, I suppose at the end of the day, one of the questions that somebody said to me when I was telling them about this, you send them the three letters or you ask them for an invoice. Um, now, is that practical? Is that something that you're going to ask the actual credit card companies to send you an invoice? Are they really going to send you? I mean, if if I'm like I've I've uh, a business and uh, which is doing very little business at the moment, but I don't sign invoices. I I if I send out an invoice, um, I don't sign it. There's no signature on my invoice. It's just a stand box standard. Well, we're not necessarily asking. We're, we're asking for verification of the claim which could be a signed invoice, or it could be a sworn affidavit, mm. uh, or it could be validation of the debt. So we're giving them a number of options. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but the Bills of Exchange Act, you see, is actually saying that you have to, you know, if they're asking for the money, uh, is that the, it has to be signed. Uh, that request had to be signed. Yeah. So, uh, but as I say, I'm... yeah. I was quite up on this about seven years ago, and what I've been doing since then is, is sort of making films and designing the website. So I'm not as up on it as some of the guys uh, on the website now, I must say. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. That's no problem. So what we'll do is um, we, we are near um, 8 o'clock, and I know we want a bit of a musical break. So we will go to a bit of music, and um, after the music, I want to... Uh, we finish off the credit cards, but I want to talk to you about the likes of parking tickets and speeding tickets because I know yeah. that's something else that the site does. So yes. um, we'll uh, we'll go over to our maestro with the music, Steve, and we'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, MSIRadio.com, and UnitedWeStrike.com. Oh, okay, and we're back. That was uh, Mary doing the old jingle there, and that was a little bit of your rhythmic sound. There must be an angel playing with my heart on your better music station. <laughs> on your better, <laughs> on music your better station. talk. Yeah, yeah, your new improved talk radio station. Excellent stuff. Um, John, thanks for coming back there. And um, we'll crack on with. We'll finish up with the credit cards, and then we'll get into all the kind of parking tickets and stuff. But okay, so let's just sum up with the credit cards. Right, three letters that you write. Now, the the question I have with you regarding the uh, the three letters. Are the banks not cutting on to these templates that people are sending in and going, oh, this is another person who got it from um, Get Out of Debt Free. We just <laughs> chanced their arm because they probably don't know what the letter means and we'll just send well, it back and tell them. Well, that's what they do. They, they send us a, a, a template letter saying that you're using a template letter. So what I suggest to people is say, uh, well, you tell them that they're using a template letter as well. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that's all they send us. And you've got to realise, you mustn't take the replies too personally, because what you realise is that, you know, there's some poor guy in, in a room, in a, he's probably in a little cube farm, in a huge, great big office somewhere, and he's got a pile of all these letters, and he's just looking at them and pressing a, a, a keyboard, you know, a, a key on a, a computer, basically, that sends a standard letter back. So, you know, these people, they don't really understand. It's, it's, it's not, they don't really understand what we're sending them half the time. And I know this from actually speaking to a bank manager who, who did actually understand a lot of this. Well, they, they always say it's that they're intelligent, intelligent enough to press the buttons, but not intelligent enough for rational thinking. Well, quite, because if they were intelligent enough for rational thinking, they would understand that the bank had no money in the first place. Uh, and... What, what gets me is they're still allowed to actually say that we can get loans. And the idea is that they've got somebody saving that they loan to you is complete rubbish. Yeah. It's complete rubbish. This yeah. does it. And people haven't woken up to this. <laughs> but there is an ad on TV which gets on my go, and it's the Nat West one, where they say the little kid goes, my mum and dad lived with the parents, and then, then Nat West came and gave them money, and now they got their own house. And yes. I always say, no, they didn't, <laughs> to that part when the know, kid says they get know. money. Because people have this perception, and I was actually um, sitting down with my mother the, the yesterday, actually talking to her about fractional reserve banking. 
And I said, now, if 250,000 of nothing, if they give you 250,000 of nothing, is that real money? Is that money? And she said, yeah. no. And I said, well, that's what they do. They fractionalize it. Um, and you just can't, and, you know, obviously she asked the question, but it's physical. They piece of paper, and I say, yeah, they have a printing machine out the back, and they just go, bong, bong, bong. <laughs> and then they give it to you, and you think that it's money, you know? <laughs> okay, so, and you've had success. So, you see, you send, you send, you send the three letters to the credit card companies, and you ask them for the information. And if after three letters they don't get back to you, or they can't give you the information, you just don't stop paying, do you? Oh, uh, well, you stop paying to start with. Yeah. You, uh, the first thing I would suggest to people is, well, I mean, you, you can uh, you can uh, work out so that, uh, you know, you do it on one card and then keep the other card ready and then go to, over to another card. So once you max out one card, uh, because this is your money that you have created and it's them that are actually getting you to go to work when they're creating the money out of thin air. Yeah. So I suggest, you, you know, you do it on one card at a time. But I would stop paying them first. Don't stop paying them after you, you know, you've got the agreement. Uh, in reality, what the banks will do is sell it to a debt collector. So remember that they've actually securitized the debt already by selling the uh, original agreement over. And then what they'll do, they'll actually sell the, uh, uh, the debt to the Credit Services Association, which will uh, give it to one of their members. Uh, like Moorcroft or Lowell's or any of the others, and they will then come and get you. But they will actually buy the debt for... The debt is actually sold for about 10p in the pound. Because the banks, it's not... You know, you can't believe that it's not in the bank's interest to actually actually chase the money, because they're far better off lending more money to somebody else than actually chase the debts they've got. So they sell the debts for a tenth of what they're worth. Uh, and this happens the world over. And so you, you realise that it's actually cheaper for them to go and make more money by lending more money out to people than it is to actually uh, recover stuff that is supposedly owed to them. Okay, so they, they sell it to... Now, there is another thing I want to touch base with you on this, but they send, send it, sell it to a debt collector. What yes. happens? The debt collector sends a solicitor's letter to you then, does he? Well, no, they don't even bother with that. What they do... Uh, they, I think what the debt collectors do is actually what's called phishing. That's pH phishing. Uh, what they want is, is for people like myself, when I first got phone calls from debt collectors who were really scared and who were really thinking, oh my goodness me, they're going to come and they're going to come around and they're going to steal everything out of my home or uh, take my car or whatever it is. And so they're looking for people who are easily scared. Now, as soon as you send these letters, what you're doing, you're sending a clear message, regardless of what's in those letters, you're sending them a clear message that you are not going to be uh, scared or you know, intimidated by them. And as soon as you do that, they're going to think, well, do I go for this guy that's sending me the letters from Get Out of Debt Free, or do we go for the little old lady down the road who bursts into tears every time we phone her up and, and says that she'll do everything she can to pay us off? So this is what they do. They go for the, sort of the weakest. They go for those people who haven't done their homework. Okay. And, yeah. You know, these these people. I don't know how they sleep at night, but I'm sure they do. <laughs> well, yeah. We, I mean, we, we've seen them on, on TV. Um, so okay. So, but the debt collectors are third-party interlopers, and you've no okay. contract with them. And completely. Well, as I said to a friend of mine who's actually going through this, that uh, she's been uh, chased by sisters regarding this. She's no contract with this other company, and she is in court uh, shortly, and um, because of this. And I did say to her, I said, look, you're going to court. You just say, well, I've no contract with you. You know, who are you? Who, you know, just because I said, look, if you ring up your credit card company and ask them for a statement and they give you a statement of zero balance, then you've no debt. Who, who yeah. are this other company? But you yeah. try and explain that to a judge in a district court and you just say, I'm sorry, but the terms and conditions are. What is the, what, I mean, if a judge does say that to you, you sign the terms and conditions and you have to pay it, what is, you know, what is the, what do you do? You've got to realise that the judge will do anything 
to ensure that nine times out of ten that the bank will will win. What you've got to do is actually by the time if, if it's if you're going to go to court, then you really I mean you've lost. If you actually end up in court, you've really lost. So it's a matter of keeping it out. And we've been using the uh, uh, and, I, and I don't know how much uh, it is going to be the same in Ireland. But I know a lot of the uh, initial laws are the same. You use the Bill of Exchange Act, Bills of Exchange Act, uh, the same as, in fact, you use exactly the same statute as uh, you do in the uh, in England and uh, Wales. So, you know, there are some laws that are the same. But we use the civil procedure rules now, and we've got a guy on the uh, the website that's been putting together some information which we are going to have when we update the new website uh, we're going to get this information out so what we're doing we're actually going to be challenging them so if they come to you with a government or a statute then we're going to be giving them fences based on what things they're asking keeping you and this we've had John, John, we're just having pro John, we're just having problems with the Skype there. We're just going to disconnect and, and call you back again, um, because the Skype has gone funny there. So just just bear with us. Okay, that's a, a strange one. Okay, we're just must going be getting close to the bone. We must be getting close to the bone. Um, obviously, it's more great information. Um, but we'll try uh, call John back. John, are you there? Are you there, John? We'll just try and get him okay, back. Yeah, we'll just I'll try that again. Just just, we'll just try and get him back. Now there was something I came across during the week, and it was something like a, an agreement of conditional acceptance. And um, just tell me when you you in. Okay, John. No, we're just calling him there. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much that's what I said. Agreement of conditional acceptance. Now, if somebody sends you a bill whoever it may be, and you say, well, who are you? And you ask them produce the, to produce the information, and they ignore that, and then they send you a summons or just a summons. Now, I did come across this where it was something got to do with an agreement of conditional acceptance where it's a court form that you fill out, and then you go down to the court and you put it in, and you go, I've asked the, this company to produce X, Y, and Z, and they have not produced it, so I'm not appearing in court until they produce this information. Now, I, th I think that's what the name of it is. If there's anybody in chat facility who actually knows the right name, I think that's the name, an agreement of conditional acceptance or conditional appearance, something like that. But it's a form that you fill out. Because what's the point in going to court? If you've re sent a letter and you've communicated with the company to ask them for information, John, are you there? John? Okay, we are. We are connected. Yeah. I don't know whether John's uh, has a problem with the USB mic. I don't know. We'll, uh, try I'm not sure. John, if you can send us just maybe drop in the, in the chat box there if you're hearing us. We're hearing you. Oh, we're not hearing you. Sorry, but <laughs> I just wonder if you're hearing us. Okay. Um, we'll see if we can get John in there and sort it out. Um but uh, so this so this letter you actually give into the court and you say that um, you know unless you show me the paperwork that I've asked there's no point going to court and I thought that was quite uh, you know a good idea I thought that was quite good because if you send the letter off to a bank or whoever and you say look this is what I want if you can show me this information then we'll go to court but unless you give me this there's no point going to court so there is something that you do I will try and find the actual um, the actual uh, name that they um, that I came across, and I'll try and tell you what it is. Um, okay, I'll well, while well, you're trying to find that, can I'm you just hear us now? Ah, yeah, we can hear you, John. We can hear you. Okay, you there, John? Okay, yeah, I've got the mobile working, but uh, it seems like the ball bounced back. I can. There. It's, it's just it sounds very flaky, John. It actually it still sounds very flaky. I know you said you were you, you did post in the chat there that you were going to uh, hook up your mobile phone for the broadband, and I do believe the connection is, uh, we're still having an issue with the connection. But uh, yeah, t I, I wouldn't be 
spending too much time on the phone because uh, you need to think of radiation, your, radiating your brain. No, it won't. Okay. Again, no, I apologise, John. Again, we've we've lost you again. The connection is is gone very flaky, and we we do have some information here saying there is an internet connection problem. Um, obviously, whoever's behind Skype doesn't doesn't want the information getting out. I, I, I don't know. Um, we we'll just we we'll just hang on, John, for a second. Maybe we might just try hook up with you again. See if see if the connection may be a little better. I think we'll have to start um, switching over to. What's the Uvo rather than Skype? Because ever since uh, Microsoft took over Skype, the service has been like diabolical. They've centralised it rather than peer to peer. So maybe uh, from for future guests and stuff, we might ask them to switch over to Uvo and then use that because Skype is just it's gone down the uh, gone it's gone terrible. Oh, no, that's funny. Now we have tried the, the Uvo software, and I'd say me and Alan were about uh, 10k apart, and we do we have noticed. Dropouts and bad quality with the Skype, but yet with the Uvu, it's it's supposed to be peer to peer, so it 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 sounds promising. Is it, what's John doing there, Steve? Um, we still we're still connected to John. Right, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Hopefully, you won't drop out either. Yeah, I'm here. I still hung. I can't get my my phone's not working uh, like I'd like it to. I'm just uh, uh, but I'll try and sort out a backup. Well, okay, that's that's it's a it's okay. Hopefully, is it Aaron that's got us coming up saying that the Skype is the internet is a bit uh, getting error message? Yeah, uh, the, I'm not sure if it's our uh, telephone lines having problems. Well, you have the the bad weather coming in. I don't know what it's like over there at the moment, John. Yeah, I can hear the wind now, so it's obviously coming up. Okay, so it could be the could be the bad weather. Okay, well listen, we'll try and get more information done. Hopefully, it it won't uh, it won't uh, bomb out. If you do have, do you have a landline number, John? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll see. We'll see how we we get on, I, John. I mean, if you have a problem, I'll uh, I'll. I'll uh, in the. Yeah, no way. You think this is you're, you're breaking unworkable. Up. Un, it's you're breaking up again, there, John. It was it was uh, it was perfect at the start, wasn't it? It was. It perfect. was BBC quality. It was BBC quality, and then it's just gone down. <laughs> are you are you on using it? Hang on, it looks. I probably got spot up, so I'm just going to swap over now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay, just while John is swapping over there, um, the actual uh, name of this form is a memorandum of appearance, and then you can do you can do a memorandum of conditional appearance, and basically you get this form, it's a court form where you can download and and, and write it out yourself, and basically you say, look, you know, I've asked this company to produce this information, they haven't produced it, so. I'm not basically going into court. Now, I've never used one of these before. I've just heard about them. Maybe what I'm saying tonight might be different next week. I might learn a bit more about them. So, But if anybody knows anything about the memorandum of appearance, then obviously you let us know in the chat facility because um, um, I think that's another good thing. Now, I know people have their own methods. You know, Obviously, we're familiar with the return to send the method. And if you look at Marcus McCune, his idea is to talk, you know, and send letters and, and, and engage these people, but ask the questions. So it's whatever method you feel comfortable with doing at the end of the day. I think that's what it boils down to. And this is what John was doing with the three letters for the actual credit cards, is you send off the letter. Um, now, uh, it, the different situations require different methods, maybe. So I just think that... Um, I just think you have to make your own mind up as to what method you want to use if you're going to deal with it. Now, I know on John's website, they also he also does and deals with parking tickets and fines and stuff like that, which we hopefully will be able to speak to John about because it would be quite interesting to find out. John, are you there? I can hear you now. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's just, it's a li well, let's see how we get on. Let's see if it stays up. 
Okay, well that's on the mobile now, so it shouldn't change. Oh, that's uh, that's okay. We're getting that's uh, that's okay. That's let's let's that's let's okay. let's run with that, yeah. Okay, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so um, okay, so we we were talking about debt collectors, John, and basically um, you said if you go to court, then chances are you're going to lose. So we shouldn't actually go to court. Um, you yes. need to play the game. So what do you do with the debt collectors? Uh, well, what we're doing with the debt collectors uh, or the banks, basically anyone that takes you to court now, and, uh, uh, you know, this is information that we've done for uh, England and Wales, uh, so it doesn't necessarily apply to Scotland or certainly doesn't apply to Scotland. Uh, we're still going to be working on other countries once, you know, we've, we've got this going. But uh, we're basically going for the civil procedure rules. Because these people don't actually follow their own rules. It's almost like they're, they've got to a stage where, you know, they, they, they sort of put these, uh, you know, legal forms out, um, but they don't actually follow their own rules. So that, that, it's crazy. So as soon as you actually dispute the claim, uh, you know, it, it's actually, we've actually been getting a lot of success with people just challenging them. And this is using a defence which is on our website, Get Out of Debt Free, and I would suggest uh, there's a guy called uh, uh, Against the System uh, who has actually been uh, sharing this information and putting it on the website. And as I say, we've had uh, 25 set-asides in the last few weeks where you know, people are actually uh, beating the uh, CCJs or the statutory demands. Uh, and this is information that's going to be going up onto the main site very shortly. Okay, and what about the, your credit reference? What about, will that be uh, affected if, you're, if you did this? Okay, well, this is another thing where automatically it would be. But, of course, if there's anything incorrect in your credit reference, what you can do is challenge it. So if you've got a situation where you say to the credit reference agency, hang on, I asked for this information and the company couldn't supply it. Uh, and this is uh, something, again, that uh, this guy called uh, Against the System has been successful at. So uh, this is somebody that's having a lot of success and he's very happy to share all the information. And as he has, you know, once we know it works pretty well every time, then we'll actually put it onto the main site and what we're going to be doing is putting like a flow chart. So uh, it'll start off saying, uh, have you received a claim pack for a county court judgment or, or a statutory demand? And you go, yes, okay, so what do I do? do fill in uh, N9B or download these particular forms so what you do you follow your way through and uh, we'll be giving you the information to actually put in your defense excellent somebody said to me john that the credit card rules are different in the uk than over here and um i'm not too sure what she meant by that but she said that what they how they can uh, approach the credit card companies is, is different but to be honest with you in my eyes the, the system's the same you're still asking the same question Prove, yes, yeah. pr prove that there's a debt. Of, yeah, at the end of the day, we're still... Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, we're still dealing with... Uh, you know, pretty, as, as far as the courts go, that's one thing. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's probably quite different. But as far as the letters go, we're talking about contract law and we're talking about the Bills of Exchange Act. And the Bills of Exchange Act, we're, we're covering seven different countries now. So we cover uh, uh, England, uh, well, the UK, Ireland, Canada, New Zealand, uh, South Africa, New Zealand, uh, you know, Australia. So we've got seven countries, and they all got a version. Even America hasn't got a Bill of Exchange Act. It uses the, uh, oh, I'll think of what it's called in a minute. Uh, but, uh, yeah, basically they're all using... Very, very similar legislation. So. Okay, let's crack on with. Do we have a, um, a listener on the chat facility, Chris? And he's yeah. got a parking fine and he's received a summons. So tell us about your methods for the likes of parking fines and all that kind of stuff. Okay, right. Well, it, it, it really depends whether you want to stick your neck out. This is something that I, I'm certainly not an expert in. Uh, what we have got is a parking notice, and uh, what it does, it basically says that if you've put anything on your, you know, pin anything on this vehicle, we will be charging you £5,000. 
uh, or I think the Irish one uh, says uh, 5,000 euros. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got a different one for each country. Yeah. Now, what you can realize is this is just contract law. And so what they are doing, they're trying to contract with you. So what you can effectively do is say, no, thank you. I don't want to contract you with you. And there's some uh, there's some very good wording. Uh, it, it's nothing. Uh, probably the best thing to do is get onto the website and, and get onto the uh, parking. Uh, the forum uh, has got some excellent uh, information on parking. Uh, and there's some uh, people having a lot of success. I know one of the recent uh, success stories on their forum is actually somebody that's actually uh, beaten the uh, parking uh, uh, actual council. Uh, but you've got to realise that the councils are a little bit more difficult than uh, private car parks. Private car parks are actually easy because they have absolutely, well, private, private car parks and councils have nothing over you. But you, what you could realise, the trouble with the councils is they tend to have very strong links to the courts. Yeah. And so the courts tend to do exactly what they wish. Uh, but uh, one you can do is no contract, return to sender, uh, and send it straight back. And I, I think the, uh, the idea is if you send it back within three days, uh, you, you know, uh, that normally does it. If it gets sent straight back, saying "I'm sorry, I don't want to contract with you," and this and, is this uh, is because this is what they they're, what they're trying to do is get you to contract because this is all they're doing the whole time. And this is private and council parking tickets, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'd agree with that. And you can send it back, uh, refuse the course. Uh, I can't remember the full wording. I'll look it up for you if you like. But okay, uh, well, Steve, th there's some wording that you can send it back within three days. As I say, get onto the get out of debt free forum, get onto the parking, uh, read. You know, you can do a search to look up you know, your own question. If not, there's some excellent guys on there that are. You know, to be fair, they're way more way ahead of me because I've actually stopped getting parking tickets anyway. I've got my parking notice up and. Uh, uh, so and I haven't got any credit cards anymore. So I'm a little bit out of practice, to be honest. Okay. Well, do the questions come in there, Steve? You want yeah. to take that for John? Yeah, John. Um, agent, uh, one of our uh, long-time listeners, just said they don't ticket your car when they put a parking ticket on it. They ticket their car. <laughs> That's and very true. That's very true. Of course. Yeah, so because if you, well, the thing is, when you register your car, as in you register your dog or you register your child. Uh, it's uh, from the word Regis. Uh, basically, what you're doing, you're handing your title to the to the state. So that's why you are the registered keeper, because that's why they can they can take your car and steal your car uh, uh, and chuck it over a cliff, and there's nothing you can do about it. In the same way as they can take your children, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. But they can't take your children if you haven't registered their birth. And we know this from uh, there are travellers who uh, are sort of pretty well outside the system. And we know that uh, they can't have their children taken from them because the state doesn't own them. So uh, this is what you've got to realise is that, the, you know, your child or your car or your dog, as soon as you register them, you're handing your title, which, you know, and, and just look at your... I know certainly in this country, uh, on your uh, on your on your papers for your car, it actually says registered keeper. I, I, uh, because I because you're you're no longer the owner. Yeah, I assume that if your child has been was born in a different country, and then you move to that country, that they, that means that basically because it's not registered in that country, they can't really touch them. Well, I would have thought so, certainly. Yeah, yeah. I'd assume that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, Crown Copyright here says on the chat facility that. Um, uh, do the, if you do the notice thing on your motor car, it will get seized in the roadblock. In the roadblock? Not too sure. It'll get seized. So I'm not aware of that. If anyone's got any information that that's happened, uh, I would be that. That's not something that I'm aware of. And so, if that's happened, that's certainly something I'd like to know about. Yeah, no worries, Steve. You have another question for John there? Yeah, just this, this is kind of backtracking a little bit, John, but uh, I suppose it's. 
It's a, a good a good time to ask. Uh, Chris is wondering, can he request a copy of the lender's stress test, which would have been done prior to issuing a loan or a mortgage? Uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, you can ask for it, whether you get for it, whether you get it or not. I don't honestly know, but uh, you know, why not? Well, can I can I kind of add to that? I actually got information. I emailed the central bank. And I asked them for information, and they send information back about mortgages and that the, the fact that your mortgage, uh, the person, that, the company that you have to mortgage with, have to, and this is a central bank uh, code of practice, that they have to inform the person who owns the mar- mortgage and get their permission before they securitize it and sell it on. Now, right. technically, if right. they sell that on without your permission, technically that's fraud. Now... Yes. Uh, one thing that Steve said, which is a good point, is that somewhere in the terms and conditions, they might give themselves power of, a, of attorney on the terms and conditions on the agreement. Yeah. But yeah. according to the Central Bank Code of Practice, the Code of Practice supersedes any terms and conditions that the bank have. Yes. So that's yeah. null and yeah. void. Now, yeah. as Chris said about the stress test, I actually sent an email to the bank, Central Bank, and I'm not expecting an answer back. I haven't received one yet. And I've said to them, where can I find out if a bank is trading solvent? Where can I find that out? How can I check to see, like any business, if, you want, if you're going to do business with a business and you want to make sure they weren't, they weren't insolvent, where do you check it? And I've asked the central bank that and they haven't got back to me. Now, I'm going to reply back to them during the week and say, you have an obligation uh, to the people because you are the financial regulator to answer any questions that the people have if they have concerns about it. And if you don't answer this, email then you are part of you know the conspiracy of dealing you know with the banks as far as i'm concerned but but you've got to realize that our central banks are insolvent that our countries are insolvent because you only actually have to look at, uh, and you can get the figures for this and this is something that i've sort of shown that that when the actual amount of debt actually exceeds the money supply well, that must mean that we're insolvent. Uh, and we can, we can actually look at, you can get onto the Bank of England website and actually look at, the, you know, look at the amount of debt and look at the money supply. And the debt outstrips the money supply. It has to, because as soon as you actually borrow money from private, you know, central banks, as soon as the government stops issuing debt-free money and it, we actually have to borrow it from central banks, then... As soon as they start, in, you, know, lend, you know, lending with compound interest, then of course, the, you know, the debt is always going to exceed the money supply. It has to. This is this is like basic economics. Yeah. And and I agree. I mean, we know this is why the house of cards are falling and it's a Ponzi scheme. Oh, we yeah, all yeah. know people are beginning to wake up and realise that they are trying to shaft the people. Um, okay. And and you know, they they're not using again. It's do as we say, not as we do. And people are beginning yes. to realise and think, hang on, this is wrong. You're trying yes. to, I mean, to come out and say that the TV programme and the Freeman movement and all this kind of stuff is, could be criminal. And we all know that the banks are corrupt and we know that the <laughs> government are all corrupt and they're in bed with each other. I mean, do they really think we're that naive and stupid? Well, unfortunately, a lot of people that be watching RT, uh, bless them, uh, they haven't woken up yet. They are waking up. Uh, and, you know, sometimes I, I hear people sort of like pessimistically saying, well, you know, I don't think they're ever going to wake up. But I see the difference, you know, because I got involved with this whole thing about seven years ago. And I see where we were then. And I see where we are now. You know, this was before YouTube was even up. So, you know, we weren't even share. We couldn't share videos online because nobody had broadband. So when I started out, I hardly knew anybody. Now I've got friends. I can honestly say I could go to any major city in, in the UK, uh, in England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, uh, you know, anywhere, uh, and, and probably in Canada and America now, and actually have somewhere to stay the night because we've got so many people that I could actually contact. Uh, and so there's a huge network of people on the planet waking up. Uh, and... It, it's, uh, I just feel we live in very, very exciting times. I think we do. I think you're right. I mean, go back even. You know, we're, OAM have been running for three and a half years now. 
Yeah. And even going back to the start, when we started OAM, you know, it's it, it, the world has changed even in them three and a half years. And the amount of information that we have, have gleaned in that time, with all the guests like yourself coming on, John, and educating us to what, what you know what's going on and, and the system and everything else. And everybody else in the alternative media who we've been involved with and linked up with and swapped ideas with and, you know, helping each other out. It's, it's been a fantastic education and learning curve. Yeah. And, and as, as you say, I think, especially after the prime time, that, I mean, we're going to be getting Claire Cullinan on in two weeks' time on OAM. And we're going to be talking to Claire about the prime time issue. I know Vin had a talk with Ben about it. And, you know, this whole waking up process. But the one thing I want to touch base with you, John, and I know one or two people, no, this is not so much being devil's advocate, but one or two people have said to me that, I know you're redesigning the site, but there's no follow through on a few things on your on the get out there tree the org site. There's no on some things there's no follow through. And I think the example they used was um you know, the sticker on your car saying, If you put a park and fine in this, we're going to sue you and there's no kind of follow through as to the procedure you take if they do that. So people are, you know, and I suppose that makes sense in a way. You say, well, okay, I, they did ignore it. They gave me a parking ticket. What do I do? So Yeah, well, what I would suggest there is that's where uh, what we're doing at the moment, we're taking information. We're, up, you know, we're redesigning the site, and uh, you're going to realise that we haven't got, like, a great big team of people. Uh, it, was, it was basically uh, two of us working on the site, and one of them's got a full-time job. So, but what we're doing, we're taking the information that's working off the forum and getting that onto the main site. Excellent. So we will be able to offer it on the main site. At the moment, uh, you know, certainly for the next few weeks, because we're literally weeks away of get, from getting this information, uh, where we can say, right, if you get the, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you actually get a parking ticket with the parking notice, then do this. Or the same thing that if the debt collector says, you know, they're going to take you, they're going to try and get a CCJ on you or give you a statutory demand, then do this. So we're gradually getting the information off the forum and onto the actual main website. But until then, what I would suggest is get onto the people on the forum that have had success and find out what they're doing. And, you know, if, if they don't answer your questions, then PM them. Uh, because okay, they are all going to be very busy because they you know, a lot of these people are working and you know coming home in the evening and catching up with uh, all the posts and the website itself sorry the forum itself is actually getting quite large so we've got a hell of a lot of categories uh, so uh, you know you're going to have to bear with us but I see it as you know we can't guarantee that people are going to win with this and and we make that very very clear. But if you've got like a protection racket, which is ripping you off, what do we do? Do we all just go ahead and just pay them because they're going to win in the end? Or do we stand up and say, no, we're going to like take you on and we're going to we're supporting people in taking them on. And we can't guarantee that in every single you know, case that we're going to win. But what we can do is actually stand up. And that's what I learned is that. Uh, by standing up to the actual system and, and actually questioning where the money is, questioning, you know, can you give me a parking ticket? What actually gives you the right to give me a parking ticket? Can you tell me, you know, where that comes from in law? And I feel it's very, very empowering. We know the system is actually very, very corrupt. And it, it's up to those of us that realise that to actually stand up to it. Well, this and I feel that's that, yeah. that, that, that's almost like... It, it, it's something that's very important that we do. That that is the trick to actually turn around and just not accept it, but ask questions. What do you think about um, this? I, I mentioned earlier when we had problem on the telephone, on the broadband, a memorandum of appearance. Have you heard about that? It's not something I've used or really, yeah. So uh, you'll have to tell me about that. Yeah, basically, uh, I just came across it the other day. Something that came into the inbox. And you have a, you, it's a court letter or a court form that you fill out, or you can do up your own form, a memorandum of, of appearance. And basically what it is is that, or you can do a memorandum of conditional appearance. And, you know, if you say to a whoever, say, I want you to prove that I owe this debt and I need X, Y, and Z, and they yeah. ignore you and they 
get, you know, uh, they get a judgment on you or someone's comes out. But basically, yeah. you get this form, you fill it out and go down to court, apparently. And you say, look, here's my memorandum of conditional appearance. I will turn up in court when they produce the information I want. And basically, you chose the ball back in their court and the court say, OK, this guy said he's happy to turn up in court, but you have to give him what he wants. Right. No, that that sounds uh, that sounds absolutely perfect. That sounds very similar to the actual defence we're using. Uh, I know a few people now that uh, by the time it gets to the court, because they are so corrupt that we're having to use their rules against against them. So we're using the civil procedure rules, and it's very rare that they actually get their own stuff right. So if you've got anyone that's a little bit sharp, uh, you can soon actually use their own sort of rules against them. Uh, because the, you know they're, they're sort of knocking out hundreds of these things, and uh, that with the letters, uh, you know, we're having quite a good success rate. But, but uh, that's something I certainly uh, sort of look into. Yeah, I mean, this is the this is the the irony of it, and this is the enjoyment of it, because when you start using their system against them, they can't turn around and say, "Well, we okay. don't we don't agree with that." And you think, "Well, yeah. you have to," because it's your game. Well, we've, we're learning the game of Monopoly and we're getting good at it. And now you're getting annoyed because we're getting good at it. You know? <laughs> well, and that's like RTE turning around and lecturing us sort of free men about, uh, oh, you, you know, about the, oh, they don't believe the law applies to them. Well, the only reason we don't believe that their statutes don't apply to them is because we've read your law dictionaries. Yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> what it says in the dictionary. It's, 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 it is hilarious. But I will say to you that I know it's a very hard job for you to do because as somebody said to me, I said, well, what's the procedures? And they said, look, it's a bit like a basketball game. He's, you know, you, I cannot tell you to to get the ball in the basket. You have to go left, right, left, right, left, yeah. right, jump. And yeah. Because... Yeah. Somebody might get in your way, and you might have to go yes. left, left, right, right. Okay. So okay. the best way is to learn the learn the basics of the law, yeah. or learn it, yeah. and and at least if you know that, it's a start. We just we, you know we can't just give you one procedure because there's so many ways this could go. Yeah. So it, yeah. you have to unfortunately, there's a little bit of work that has to be done, and they have to learn it. And I do okay. kind of if I'm doing I did the letter recently, and um, I sent it off. Um, for an establishment and basically I could have used a template but I decided to write it myself for the simple reason is I know what's in it I, you know, I understand the letter yes, yes. So, and, and, and that's very that's very important that you do actually do a bit of work and, and actually try and make sense of these things and, and now when you, you know I, I had somebody uh, a good friend of mine asked me to uh, yeah, yeah, what to do about a letter and I actually because I hadn't written a letter for ages and ages, it was good for me to actually sit down and actually go through and you know, answer every single point. Uh, but there are some brilliant uh, people that are doing some very good stuff. There's a company called voidmortgage.com. I think it's voidmortgage, all one word, dot com. <coughs> and uh, another guy who's uh, well worth a visit is uh, if you Google... White Rabbit Education, or uh, have a look at their uh, YouTube videos. Uh, Size Spaniard uh, is doing some excellent work uh, taking on the banks, debt collectors. He's actually an ex-bank manager. Uh, he was uh, used to be a bank manager for uh, the Queen's Bank, Coots, so, uh, and he was also a debt collector, and he, he really knows his stuff. And uh, he's, he's very much on side. We, we, so, uh, we, we would like to get him on. But I'm just, I'm just watching the time, and there's a couple of questions yeah. that we have. But one of the things I wanted to say, I've just remembered, there yeah. is, I, I thought of this, and I mentioned this idea on OAM a couple of weeks ago, and Steve might remember me saying it, but there is a company in the UK which apparently will buy your debt off you, and then the, the credit card companies have to deal with them, and they just tell the credit card companies to take a hike. So it's the reversal of a debt collector. Yeah, so well, I, I, I've thought about that, because if we actually set up our own debt collection company, then at least we could buy the debts for 10% and uh, let people actually just pay 10%, but that's still giving in to them. Well, it is, but, I, well, yeah, I totally agree, but this company in the UK, now, I don't have the name of them but basically you pay uh, they will buy the debt off you you probably have to pay them a small fee 
yeah. then they will buy buy the debt your debt off you, and then obviously if anybody turns up, you go, well, I sold my debt. The same way the bank <laughs> sold their debt, yeah. I've sold my, and then of course they they will deal with it, and that's it. And I thought, well, we need more of them. Okay. And, and any, well, anybody that is confident, say, say for example, you said, right, okay, we're going to charge 10% for every £1,000, right? 10%, yeah. so that's £100 for every £1,000. Somebody owes five grand, they give you 500 quid, right? So they don't, they're, they're in debt for five grand, but all they do is give you 500, and legally, they take, you buy the debt off them, and then, yeah. you know, and then you sort it out that way. And wouldn't that be brilliant if we had more of them companies around to do that? Totally, totally. Uh, because I actually spoke to the, you know, our uh, friendly bank manager that we uh, chatted to, who was, uh, he, you could see he was actually disillusioned by the whole banking system because uh, he, uh, he, he actually uh, became a bank manager and thought, oh, this is a great job. And then the whole banking crash happened in 2008. And so, uh, and then he started looking into, and he came to a lot of the conclusions that we did as well. But, uh, oh, I can't remember. Sorry, I, I've just lost my thread there for a moment. Oh, you just got disillusioned with the system and the bit. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, he did. He, uh, I, I was actually going to uh, link it. In. Sorry, what were you saying there? I was going to link it into that. Just about the uh, setting up a company that buys the debt. Yes, well, that's right. I, I remember actually said to him, uh, look, if, if I actually paid off my mate's bank account, so, you know, say if I actually, like, paid off his overdraft, you wouldn't chase him for that money anymore, would you? He said no. So if my you know, so if I was a debt collector and I paid it off, surely that debt's gone. So that guy doesn't owe any money. And he said, Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. So can you see, when the debt collector actually pays your you know, the debt collector buys your debt, but in buying your debt, he's actually paying your debt off. Yeah, of course. Under the Bills of Exchange Act as well. Yeah. So this is this is the whole thing, you see. Uh, and, and another thing with debt collectors we actually asked for uh, uh, is the, uh, not the uh, deed of assignment, it's the notice of assignment. Sorry, the deed of assignment, not the notice of assignment. And uh, this is something we've been asking for, uh, and that's been standing up in court, because... Basically, they don't bother doing the proper because they get so many of these bloody. Uh, uh, there's so many people uh, defaulting that they don't do the proper paperwork because they haven't got time. They're doing thousands of these things, and so what we're doing, we're actually asking them for paperwork. We know, you know, we know that they haven't got, and uh, and so. You know, it, it, it's working now. It is yeah. working. Well, listen, John, we're, um, we're just watching the time there. Thanks, Crown Copyright. No, I'm not one of these people that, you know, watch the clock and leave at five. I'm just organised with my time. Good time management. <laughs> right, so we, we have one more question. Uh, Steve, yeah. you want to throw that over to John about the um, about the mortgages and yeah. take it from there. Okay, yeah, we... <clears throat> we I want to just want to comment as well before I do that that I was having a look at your website and I've seen some information reusing promissory notes uh, oh, have yes. templates there using them as payment. Uh, just if you can you just sum that up for me in one line if you can, John, because that was kind of interesting. There was one thing that stood out stood out uh, when I seen it. Well, uh, all I would say is that uh, both our sort of uh, bank friendly bank manager. Uh, when we actually went to him, and I think the video is actually up there, uh, we went to our friendly bank manager and said to you, uh, if we come to you with a promissory note, do you have to accept it? And he actually turned around and said, yeah, of course we do. And we said, so if we come into your bank with a, with a, you know, with a promissory note, you've got to accept it. He said, yeah, of course we do, but we're not going to. And uh, I think it was Lord Denning who actually said that a promissory note is to be treated as cash. And so what it is, you've got to realise that just because they create money out of thin air uh, doesn't mean that we can't. Uh, and But anyone that thinks, that, oh, fantastic, uh, you know, I can pay for everything, I can buy whatever I want with a promissory note, you've got to realise that you're going up against a system. And yes, people have had success. And you can go on to our success stories and you'll see people that have been successful using promissory notes, especially to pay off things like... Uh, utility bills uh, that's been quite successful because these companies can actually use your promissory note uh, but 
you know, it, it's not a magic, you know, basically, it's not a fix all. take the system on, it, it, it's not a, yeah, it's not a fix all, as you say. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then the final question, John, is from Crown Copyright, and Crown's Copyright wonders, is John aware of any banks in the UK recalling mortgages on those who have not defaulted on payments? Uh, I've heard of it. I've heard of this going on. Uh, I, I can't actually think of anything specific, but I have heard of all sorts of things going on. Uh, the more I look into banks, uh, the, the more I realise that they're doing... Uh, I, I know people that haven't even been behind with their mortgage who's, who have had their houses taken off them, but not anyone personally. That, that's been stuff I've seen on the internet. I've, I've heard that, John. A woman in America, um, she yes. actually challenged the bank regarding the validity of the mortgage again. You know, was it securitized? Show me the, le- show me the, the, the original note. And they start yes. foreclosing on her because she asked the question. Yes, yes, they do that, they do that. Uh, the big banks are nothing more than international criminals, in my personal opinion. Uh, and the more I find out about them, and I've got a friend of mine uh, who lives not too far away from me, she's uncovered a huge fraud within the, within the sort of local bank, well, I say the local banks, but within uh, you know, the branches of the local banks, and they uh, fraudulently put a, you know, working with the uh, uh, the land registry, uh, where they've actually got title over her house, uh, completely fraudulently. And the trouble is, as soon as you go to a police station, or there's nobody to t- turn to no. because the police will ignore it. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's been turned to an MP. She's basically turned every single way she can. And nobody is interested in helping her out. And, that, and that's why the system has to come down and we have to educate people because of, course. Because of that. Because they won't, they, they won't help the people because they just think that we're all mad and, you know, why would they do that? You know, people, again, put their morals on other people or they say, exactly. it's not my job for us. I'm just, you know, well, I'm just going to do my job, you know. This has been going on for an awful long time. You've got to yeah. realise that the City of London had walls around it. Yeah. And it had walls around it, not to keep out marauding tribes or Vikings or um, any other, you know, the Scots or anything like that. It had walls around it to keep out the actual local Londoners. And the only time when an alderman, there was an inside job, when the alderman actually opened the key at night and a whole load of people came in and they actually uh, uh, came in and strung a few people up because... The City of London, I, I think the City of London has been the behind the global banking fraud. Uh, and, and that's, again, my personal uh, belief, that's all. OK, John, well, listen, we've reached that time. We're going to have to finish up. But <laughs> listen, thanks a lot for coming on. We, we actually did Thank have... Thank you very much. We did have Karen Hulis on last week. She is the World Bank whistleblower. So she... Uh, she uh, uh, right, OK. She gave us uh, a good bit of information on what's going on. But listen, John, I have definitely we'll, we'll get you on again in a few months' time if you're up for it. And, oh, yeah. and we'll, uh, what we'll do is, um, you know, get an update on what's going on. Fantastic information, as usual, John. I'm going to pass you over to Steve, and Steve will just do the roundup there. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just keep John on with us be, and, the, and then we can finish up and then we'll have a chat with John after the show. Steve. Thanks, Alan. That, that's great. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's been, it's been powerful information, John. And as I say, I have looked at your website. I urge anyone who's listening to this program, e- e- even if it's tomorrow when they're listening on the, on the podcast, is to check out your website because it is a mind full of information. I know you say you're updating it. It's a beautiful site. It's well laid out, well presented. But um, in, in the round of John, can you just try, throw out the website address there? And if you have a YouTube channel or if you have any other means where people can find out what you're up to, that would be great. Yeah, certainly. Uh, well, it's getoutofdebtfree.org. Uh, if you can't remember it, just Google Get Out of Debt and... The great thing is we're now at number one on Google for a lot of the uh, debt-related terms. Uh, I can't honestly remember our uh, what I'll do. I'll actually uh, have a quick look on the website here. Uh, I can't actually remember what our uh, YouTube channel is. Uh, but I, I think it's uh, Monopoly Money Fraud. Uh, but 
basically, if you actually get onto the site itself and look up, there's actually links to everything on the site. So uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I can't remember half what the, half the links are, but uh, get on the site and there's links to pretty well everything. And, there is, uh, there is. And if you if, if you're not sure, do contact us. There's a contact us uh, link on the front page. So uh, yeah, it's actually quite a big site, and we've got uh, we've got a Twitter account, we've got uh, Facebook. And we've got YouTube, so uh, yeah, we've got a few of the uh, various different uh, social uh, websites. Brilliant stuff. All right, John, listen, oh, just just stay with us, John, there, will you? We're just going to yep. bring down your microphone. We're going to finish up in the um, last few minutes, and then after we uh, we uh, shut down, we'll uh, have a chat with you after that. So just hang on there for excellent. a minute, John, can you? Thanks. Okay. Okay, brilliant. That's uh, excellent. That's John Withrick from uh, Ghetto Debt Free, the org website. Brilliant information. Just to, we have a few minutes left, so just to give an update, I do have uh, the maxim here, and it says, consent makes the law, a contract is a law between the parties, which can acquire force only by consent. So I've been looking at a few maxims in law, and maybe you can't use them in court, um, maybe it's, you know, that's kind of old language, but I think they, they're still relevant. I mean, consent creates the law. That's so. That's you know, for people to understand that, that's very powerful. Consent creates the law. So you don't consent, then the law doesn't doesn't exist. And um, but next week we have on a Dr. Philip Michael from the Irish Doctors Environmental Association. Dr. Philip uh, Michael is part of a group of doctors who are concerned about the dangers of Wi-Fi and mobile phones and all that kind of stuff. So they have formed a group called the. Irish Doctors Environmental Association. Um, so we're going to be getting Philip on next week and we're going to be talking to Philip all about you know, why they got together and why they think Wi-Fi is bad. And I have to say, Dr. Philip Michael, I mean, the amount of initials that he has after his name is unbelievable. It's like looking at the alphabet. It is like looking at the, alph- the alphabet. Definitely has a lot. But there you go. But very busy week. Um, a few things. We're going to be doing a bit more tweaking Uh, this end at the studio but I hope the audio is okay tonight we will see later on the podcast and the the, the levels we might be in Steve's um, studio too next week you never know we'll see what happens yeah so expect audio levels to be all over the place (laughs) (laughs) I will have to have a bit of practice on that a bit of practice a lot of practice have you got anything planned this week Steve um, well since I won the lotto yeah I'm just going to buy something really expensive and trash it no um, I think Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, um, I, I meant to talk about this earlier, but um, the opportunity didn't present itself. Uh, my father went to the doctor last week. Uh, he uh, just got chatting to the doctor, and he asked about flu vaccine. And the doctor was more than happy to say, "Oh yes, that's no problem because you're over seventy. Uh, that's no problem. You 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 can get that now." And he went, "No, no, 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 no. I just want to know about it. What's in it?" And the minute he asked what's in it, the doctor said, "Oh, uh, why do you want to know that?" He said, well, my son does a little bit of looking into things like this and uh, he just, you know, he's, he's kind of shared some information with me. He spoke to some doctor in America. Now, my dad's doctor had a trainee doctor with him. And when my dad said he spoke to some doctor in America, his, the trainee immediately said, oh, well, yeah, he was, he was uh, struck off. We know all about that. He was struck off and it's all rubbish. So uh, it was actually Dr. Andrew Wakefield who I was referring to. And he's definitely not an American doctor. He's a UK doctor. So obviously the guy who was with my dad's GP hadn't a clue. But anyway, my dad uh, managed to get a leaflet. That's it there. uh, Out of one of the flu vaccines. I have scanned it. And I, th- I think Alan has it. I'm not sure if it's up on the site as of yet. But it's the... Not yet. We'll, the, get, we'll get it up. Yeah, the little... The little... Uh, piece of paper that comes with the flu vaccine. It's all kind of bog standard stuff. And it does on site two mention some of the side effects of the flu vaccine and how it may not be beneficial to you anyway but it does mention Julien Barr syndrome and anyone who has looked into Julien Barr syndrome would know that it's kind of fatal you can you can end up completely paralyzed uh, from the neck down to the waist down or you know and, and that can be permanent so it's uh, it's kind of a life-changing uh, syndrome if you get it but yeah it's a flu vaccine you know I don't think the flu is the, the flu is not going to kill you really. I mean, you know, you take it, take some some paracetamol, you stay warm, you sweat it out, you you have an old lamp sip or something like that, and uh, you know it runs its course and and that's its job done. But people who are going in and rolling up the sleeves for this without without ever seeing this piece of paper, 
I actually put the challenge to my dad. I said, if you go into the doctor, ask him for that piece of paper. I said, and I guarantee you won't get it. And little did I know, he came up to me during the week with the piece of paper and he said, there you go, got that for you. So, fair play to you, Dad. Isn't it, isn't it funny how the doctor doesn't actually tell you that before he gives you the vaccine? Yeah. He doesn't give you the warning about Julian Bear. You just go up and he injects you. You roll up your it. sleeve. The HSE said it's safe, so it must be. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Whatever. Wherever they Whatever. say. Wherever they say. It must, be, it must be true. Okay, again, just a, a quickly, and uh, very quickly, thanks again for the people who are donating. It makes a big difference. It helps us get the equipment we need. And we are getting there bit by bit. We have a, a, f- a few more bits and pieces, obviously, to get, or we'll probably be always up- upgrading. But we are doing very well. Um, I, I had to say, Steve walked in tonight, and he was quite impressed with the, the change around in the studio. Yeah, the leather suite is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and the reclining chairs. <laughs> yeah, talk about the Bentley outside. Yeah, no, we wish. But no, we are. your donations make a big difference, and it's fantastic. As I say, money's tight. If you can click on the ads, if you like the ad, that helps as well. But thanks again for everybody who donated. It does make a big difference. But for myself, until another week, as I say, Philip Michael, Dr. Philip Michael on next week. Take care. If you have any news, let us know, and we'll see you next week. For myself, Alan James, good night. Okay. And myself, for myself, Stephen George as well, we'll uh, catch, with you, catch up with you next week. So until then, take care. Good night. God bless. 